Hey there, guys. It's Roy from Apotheca Marketing. Today, we're going to take a look at more Looker Studio dashboards using GA4 data. And so we're going to take a look at things that maybe aren't as apparent and how to do right out of the gate. Uh, so we're going to show you some tricks. We're going to focus largely on conversions and conversion type data. So let's take a look. So I've got a dashboard here. This is pulling in GA4 data. And this is the default. So we're going to get rid of that. So we showed you previously how to do a score scorecard that had revenue. So let's do that again, just as a review, we're going to put in total revenue. All right. So that's revenue for this sample account. But what is not in here is conversion rate. And I'm not sure why they don't really have conversion rate in here, but we are going to take a look. So if you look for any kind of conversion rate, you can get conversions, but not a conversion rate. So what we're going to do in this case for this card is create a metric. So we're going to create a field. We're going to call it conversion rate. We're going to take transactions and that is a little different from GA3, which had orders, but no, this has in GA4 transactions, we're going to do it by sessions. And then down here, we're going to under number, we're going to make sure that this is a percent apply. And there you go. There's a conversion rate. Um, again, you could do conversion rate on, um, unique users. But sessions is typically what our clients are using. And so that's what I included here. So now we've got revenue, we've got conversion rate. Now let's maybe take a look at average order size. So again, that is not something that is built into this. So you can see order is not in there. So we're going to do another calculated field. Click on this. Create a field, average order value, and we're going to take revenue and divide that by transactions. And this is a currency. We're going to go down to United States. And there's your average order size. So you can see if these are available out of the box, like they were in GA4, you can do some calculations and create these calculated fields. Now, one of the things I will say is you can create the calculated field in here, or you can do over here. So this, if, it, if you do it in this section under this individual chart, it will be available in this chart. If you create a field that you know you're gonna use, something like conversion rate, or average order size, you can also do it over here. And this will um, then be available for all of your reporting for this account. So um, it will, you know, you can use it in other dashboards and stuff like that. So one note that if you do use it a lot, you may want to add it over there. So, so now we've got revenue, we've got conversions, we've got average order size. Those are some typical conversion metrics. But what about other types of conversions that are revenue? All right, so we know for this site that they also use a conversion for registrations uh, where people can log in and sign up for an account. And so we're going to create a field for this. So uh, we have, we know it's an event that is set up. So event count. Okay, so that's how many just events on that site have happened. But in this case, we're going to need to add a filter. And so we're going to create a filter. We're going to call it registration. And verify that it's G4. We're going to use an event name. So we know that the events all have names and it contains, and in this case, we know that they're using 
the um, predefined sign up event. Um, if you know that it's a custom event that's been set up, you can actually go into the GA4 uh, reporting to see what they're calling it or go into the admin to see how that event is coming through. However, there, what is the actual name of that event coming through? So in this case, we're going to put that and there you go. So now we have the number of registrations on the site over here. I can then rename that so people know what that is. And now we're reporting on registrations. So those are some key conversion type events. And again, this registrations would work for any other event that you know is on the site that um, is being counted. So it could be clicks on a certain type of link. It could be uh, other types of metrics that they are recording. And you can pull that in here. Um, they could be, you know, page scrolls, um, all of those types of things. Um, the one thing that is not clear, however, is what if you have this revenue number, but now you want to report on it by a specific marketing campaign. And so you want to see the revenue from that campaign. Now you can do that by adding a table and seeing all of your campaigns. And you can do that by going in here and then you could say campaign. And so we have the campaigns, we have revenue, we can add other metrics, um, you know, add to carts, that type of thing. Uh, add to cart is a new event, so it doesn't have metrics yet. So, but in this case, we don't want a table. We don't want to have the client search through a table. What we want to do is create a card for it. So in that case, what we could do is add a card. Okay, and we're going to say revenue. And we're going to add, oh, we don't want to add revenue, total revenue. All right, so there we have that overall number. And we're going to add another filter. So in this case, we're going to create a filter that, let's say it's for um, paid search. I'm going to say medium. Contains. And we know in that report, it's usually called CPC, cost per click. Let's say that PPC. And so we can see the revenue from that. And we're going to name that. We're going to call it PPC. Then we're going to copy that, paste it, because maybe we also want to see SEO. So let's take that and put it for that. Uh, we're going to add, do a different filter. So we still want revenue. We're going to call this SEO to differentiate it. We're going to add another filter. And you can see up here that it's, as you're creating filters for a specific report, it saves them. Um, if you need to change one of those filters, you can actually go back here. And um, if it's using that filter, you can click on it and you can actually edit it here. So I don't know that there's an easy way to delete them once they're created. I have not found it. If you have found a way to delete the filters, let me know in the comments because it's kind of annoying when you have a whole bunch of them. Um, all right, so we're going to create another filter. In this case, we're looking for SEO, so we're going to name it SEO. And we're going to, again, go back to medium. And organic search. I believe that's what it's called. Nope. Let's change that to just organic. All right, there we go. So now we have organic. You can do that for any of the marketing campaigns that you may have um, running in there. Now, where I have run into issues and are, we are looking for um, a way around this is when 
And so again, if you have um, an idea of how to do this or have you done it in the past, so say we um, actually want to look at, again, events. How actually it's delete them. So let's copy registrations. So say we want to do registrations that are from a specific marketing campaign. Okay, we've got registrations. This is uh, looking at the registration data. So if you go in here, you can see it's looking for event name, registrations. Now, if we add another filter for SEO, it's not showing any data. So because we've created that as a registration. Now, what I don't know is if you add it over here as a field and then add a filter over here, if that works. So um, we're gonna do some experimenting with that. But again, it would be nice if we could actually then show uh, registrations for a given that you know SEO is driving or paid search is driving, obviously, uh, we don't want just um, to see the whole number for everything. So so that gives you a little bit of insight into how to create um, conversionary, uh, average order, and to look at specific events like registrations or logins, that type of thing. Um, again, you can find your event list if you go into your Google Analytics. Let me show you that. This is the demo account for Google merchandising. You can go to the admin and you can look at the events and you can see all of the different events that they have um, and those which are marked as conversion or not. Um, so you, if you wanted to report on, for instance, add to carts, you can do that. Um, now you know the name of it, that they're actually tracking it. That is a default one, by the way. And so um, they are probably tracking that one purchase, obviously, review order, view cart, um, Android lovers, that's kind of interesting. Um, so you can see that there are uh, different events that they could report on. So let's let's take that and see if we can do a similar one here. Let's just maybe we want to see how many people are adding to cart. Um, and so instead of registrations, we're going to do away with that. We know that it's an event. So this was events up here. We just have called it registrations right here. So let's call it add to cart. We're going to create a new filter. Alert. Event name again. And using the taxonomy that Google specifies. And we saw that that was the name of the actual event in here. So add to cart and see that that is in there. So we can pull it into the report. Save. And so that's how many add to carts uh, for this data source. Um, and so you can create, again, a number of calculated metrics like that, that look at different things that may not be readily available from GA4 in Looker Studio. So hope that was helpful. This is just a quick look at some of these. Obviously, you can get a lot more sophisticated with this. There are some bugs in the Looker Studio GA4 connection where you'll find that certain metrics and dimensions are missing for some reason. Um, so don't get frustrated if you run into those. And again, be careful when you're building these dashboards because as you're building these dashboards with the data throttling that Google now has on Looker Studio, um, you will start to get errors once you heat, hit the uh, um, maximum amount of, of uh, cards and data and widgets that you have uh, in your reporting. So it'll actually throw an error. You then have to wait until the next day to finish that, which is extremely annoying. Um, but that is what they're doing right now. So if this was helpful, guys, let us know if you have comments or tricks that you've learned. We'd love to see those and hear about those as well. And of course, hit the like, subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.